Okay, so we're back for part six. Um, and in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to add some more functionality to the enemy. Okay, so last time we just had him, so he uh, he took some damage and we spawned the emitter. The only thing I've changed here is I've just made the emitter slightly bigger. I'm not super happy the way the emitter's working. It would be better to do it in the animation notification state, but I can't find a way to make the location editable. Um, but we'll figure that out. Uh, probably when we do a more advanced combat system. The idea behind this series, remember, is just to introduce you to uh, some of the ideas of setting up a uh, third-person character. We are going to make more advanced third-person characters in different series. So um, we're just going for the really basic. You know, if you're doing a game jam or you're just putting together a quick prototype, this is the sort of method you're going to be using, just nice and quick. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to sort of fake some AI for this guy. So what we don't want to do in this series is uh, get into Blackboard stuff. And if you've never um, done AI in Unreal, uh, this will be a nice introduction. But just know that there is a better and more comprehensive way to do AI built directly into Unreal, uh, the Blackboard system and uh, all that, which I will be going over in a later series. Okay, but we're just going to do some quick AI. So really, all I want this guy to do is follow her, and then when he gets within a certain range, he'll attack. Uh, and that's it. Simplest kind of AI I can think to do. So I'm going to open up. I'm going to comment this. So just going to drag a box over it and then hit C and then type damage that's what that is uh, and then we're going to think about uh, what we're going to do so um, let's think we're going to need a node called AI move to okay, and this node is going to be doing all of our uh, looking for the player and moving to it so we want an event begin play because we'll have this happen as soon as play starts we could have a trigger or we could use uh, ai sensing so that you can see in fact let's do that let's do that that'll be a better way to set this up so let's go into the viewport and let's add the computer uh, component ai sen um, no it's not called ai sensing it's called porn sensing i believe yeah porn sensing okay we'll just leave it called that and then we need to go set up. So if we compile, we'll be able to see. Now, this is a hearing and seeing system, but we only want the sight stuff, okay, because we're not doing any hearing stuff. So anything that's hearing, just set to zero. So we're not doing it. On the sight radius, uh, I'm going to set that to... So that's obviously dealing with the, the, the circle. I'm going to set that to 1,500. And then the cone, I'm going to set to 45. So he's looking directly out in front of him like that. Okay, uh, I'm going to set that to be a thousand, so that I have to get quite close to him. Compile, uh, and now we can use this. See, we've got all these buttons on C pawn. Okay, so event graph on C pawn. So when we see a pawn, I don't know if we have to do a cast here to tell it which pawn, but we'll just. Yes, we're going to have to. So cast player. Oh, spell him. Cast the player VP. Ob yeah, object goes into pawn. Pawn will go here because we want to move to this. Oh, no, no, no. So the pawn we want to move is ourselves. So... Here, I believe we just type self, and then we get a reference to self, okay? Because we want to move ourselves. Plug that into there. Uh, the destination, we can get world location of this, but we can just plug in the target actor there, okay? That should just take care of that destination for us. Uh, we might find we need to come back and do that. But So when we see the player, move AI to the target actor, which is the player. Okay, let's hit compile. Uh, now, that's just going to happen once. We're going to have to come back and um, 
you know, uh, do a loop here so that this comes back on itself. But for now, we just need to see if this is working. So <clears throat> let's move her out of the radius of the site. Grab her. So let's move her over here. Yeah, she's out of that. Uh, and then we need to put down a nav mesh or nothing will work. So if you just type nav, N-A-V, and we want a nav mesh bound volume, place that, I just place it in the center. And then I'm just going to scale that up so it covers the entire place. You can do it on the Z as well, that's fine. And then if you hit P on your keyboard, you'll see that the nav everywhere green is where this character will be able to move. So I hit it, play. Now he does nothing. I walk into his zone, and there he goes. So we've already set his movement up, so he's chasing me. All right? But now he's got to my location, and now he's stopped. Okay? Because he's, he actually got to my location, so he is finished. Now I've gone back into his AI, into his uh, sensing. Now he's got to me. Now if I can stay in his sensing, he will constantly run after me. Now we've got this problem. But you see, I managed to escape his sense in there, so I got away. Now we're going to fix that. But we've got this problem where if I get too close to this guy, my camera sort of messes up. So there's an easy way to fix that. Just open up your player. This should just fix it, but we might have to do a little bit more work on it. Go to the viewport. Go to the spring arm. And here where it says do collision test, just untick that and then hit compile. And then go to play. And now we don't have that clipping problem with the camera. It's good. Okay. So what we want, though, is once he's seen us, to sort of have an activated state, right? So that he'll always chase us. Or he might lose us, but um, we want to write that, like have a random, oh, well, he might stop and do something. We might not do that, but let's just see what we're going to do. So let's click on him, open him up. So right now... <clears throat> Um, let's unplug, uh, right, let's think, let's have a variable called active, and we want, so ignore this, I was just doing some stuff, we can just delete that, and I want that to be a boolean, uh, so we'll call this AI active, underscore active, <clears throat> Okay, so what we might want to do is, hmm. so when the pawn senses the player, we want to set AI active to true, okay? So I think we need to just delete this. Or not delete this, but just unplug this by holding down Alt and then clicking on it and then it'll unplug it. Oh, in fact, no, that's not right. So we want to check to see if we're sent. So just un undo that and then do it like that. Okay, so we want to check to see if it's the uh, player first that we are sensing. And then, you know, if that is the case, then set active to be true. Okay, then what we're going to do just underneath is we're going to do an event tick. Okay, and then that is going to, then we're going to move to. Now we should still be able to just do that for the target actor. Okay, it's not in the same line, but we should still be able to use that reference. So now on, when he sees me, oh. No, so that, that is a problem. So let's have a look. So instead of doing that then, what we'll do is we'll get world location here. Uh, maybe we need to get actor world location. No, get actor. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I wonder why I can't just plug that in there. Event tick, move to target actor's destination. Yeah, why why doesn't that work? Why is it he go he's going to 
<clears throat> he's going to zero zero zero. Okay, so when he does see me, he is following me. Absolutely 100% all the time. Obviously, we can hit him. We don't want him to get that close as well. We'll have a location where he'll come to. Okay, so why then on the beginning of play does he move there? So let's have a look. Have we got an event begin play? Um, set active is off initially. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah, we've done something wrong here. So, I think we have to just pull out a branch here from the start. We need to see if this is active, right? So, we'll uh, get, we'll drag in uh, AI active, get it, and drag it into the condition. So, if AI active, AI active is true, then move to this location. Compile. He shouldn't move anywhere initially. Right, okay, that seems to have fixed that. Then he sees us, okay, and now he's on us. Uh, I think the best thing for us to do is slow him down because he moves at the same speed we do. And we also need to get him to, you know, attack. So what we're going to do is inside the player, perhaps? I mean, I don't think this matters too much. Um... No, we'll do it inside the enemy because then all the code for the enemy will be inside the enemy. So enemy, blueprints. What we're going to do is we're going to put like a sphere around him. And when that sphere touches the player, he'll do a couple of different things that could happen. Like stop, uh, attack, probably just attack to be fair. Okay, so we want a sphere collision. And we'll call this attack, uh, attack collision. Yes. And we'll click on that, and then we'll scale that up. Can't see it right now, but we will in a sec. Now, again, we might find we need to scale this up a little more or whatever. So we'll, we'll just do that for now. Go to the event graph. What have we got here? So this is C to comment, and this is uh, pawn. Oh, there's AI movement. So let's just check the time. Okay, so we need to start wrapping this up soon. So, um, Let's just see if we can get this working. So we've got this uh, attack collision. And we're going to say uh, on component begin overlap. So when it begins an overlap with the player. Um, so we're going to cast a player. So in a later video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, or in a later series, I'm going to show you how to avoid doing lots of casts. So really, you want to be creating a reference to an actor. Uh, and then also that if you're having problems with casting, if you can only cast between, say, um, character blueprints because of this object uh, wildcard thing, then that will help you with that. But also, it's better not to do a lot of casting, especially on a tick, uh, because castings are expensive. And it, when you cast to something, it, every everything associated with it gets loaded into memory. Um as opposed to when you are referencing the only the specific component or whatever you are referencing then gets called into memory. So you definitely want to avoid casting. But for this example, we're fine because we're just learning the basics. Okay, so cast the player BP. The object's going to go into the other actor because it's a different actor, so another actor. Uh, cast the player BP. And uh, so that's checking to see if that we've overlapped. Okay, and then what we're going to do is create another variable called attack. And then what we do is we will set that to be true. And for now, we'll just print a string just to make sure that that's happening. Uh, we'll plug that into there, and it'll tell us if it's true or not. So if we hit compile, hit play, let him overlap with us, yeah, and it's true. So he's overlapping with us, and it's true. Now, in order for that to activate again, we'd have to go out of it and then back in. 
Uh, we also probably only want it to happen once. So the last thing I'm going to do in this particular video is just open up the enemy again. Go to his movement component, and I'm just going to slow him down a little bit. So under character walking here, we've got the max walk speed set to 600. Let's turn that down to 400. Okay, so he's walking now as well. So that's good, because we can have a walk and a run state. We can run for a little bit. We'll set that up straight away in the next video. Okay, so I'll just I'll just end this one here and we'll get back in a minute.